<laughs> Welcome Randy. back to Microsoft Build Live. We still have so much in store for you today, like the good and bad and the ugly with serverless. But first, I would love to dive in with powering .NET development on Mac with Visual Studio 2019. And I have a group of guests today. We have Michaela, Jordan, and Christo. Hi. Hi. Hey. All right. So huge announcements this week. What are some of the things that .NET developers have to look forward to? Um, the big feature in Visual Studio for Mac 2019 8.1 is the new editor. We've ported the editor from Windows to Mac and added a new native UI on top of that. And that brings a lot of really great new features um, to Mac developers. So you now have support for things like multi-cursor ed editing, but also Mac integration features like the e emoji input and uh, support for other input methods right to left text support, uh, better accessibility, uh, word wrapping. There's a whole lot of stuff in there. There's a whole lot of stuff. Like, are you, do you have demos for us to look at today? Uh, I do, yes. All right. Uh, is there anything, Jordan and Crystal, you want to add before we jump into the demos? A couple of the other big things for .NET devs in. So what we have is uh, we got a preview out of our next release, which is our Visual Studio 2019 for Mac. Uh, version 8.1 preview one. So along with the new editor coming on by default, you've got .NET Core 3 support. So you get that installed, and it'll light up in the IDE, and then new uh, .NET Core, ASP.NET Core templates for uh, Spa, Angular, React, React Na uh, not React Native, Redux, and uh, Razor class libraries. So a few of the other things in the preview that's available this week. Oh, wow. So there's a lot for .NET developers to look mm -hmm. forward to. Yep. And yes, Mac developers is. as well. Yes. All right. Chris, anything for you before we jump in? Yeah, and let's not, let's not forget the love that we show for Unity developers that uh, prefer to use Macs. We also have uh, support for Docker, uh, which is built in, and some developers may not know about that. And finally, uh, support for serverless with uh, functions. Uh, one of the things that we added is the auto-update of the functions runtime. So every time the team pushes a new runtime, we pick it up, and it's available for you, so you don't have to do extra steps. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, support for deploying to Azure as well, again, all from inside the IDE, so .NET developers can feel at home inside for Mac as well, yeah. All right, so now for the fun bits, demos, demos, demos. All right. Uh, yes, so I have here uh, the solution that, jo that Jordan and I uh, built earlier in our talk, where we built a full, a full um, kind of Bluetooth uh, device to a Xamarin app, to Azure Functions, to an ASP.NET web app, to, uh, to an Angular front end. So we built the whole thing in our talk, which you can catch online if you didn't see it. Um, so I have that solution open right here. Um, and this is in our new editor. So one of the features that we were kind of surprised to hear that people wanted, um, but then we, try, we tried it for ourselves and found out uh, why they wanted it, it's super cool, is word wrapping. So uh, yeah, so you can see the little in indicator here that shows that the line has, has been wrapped, and it's actually wrapping that back with indentation as well. So this is built on the same core as the Windows version, works the same, the same way. Um, you now get all sorts of great features like um, multi-cursor editing. So you can place these cursors in a bunch of locations, type all places at once. That's super cool. Um, and via Roslyn, we have all of the uh, ref refactorings that you expect. So I can do Alt-Enter, introduce a, a local there, then type a new name for my local. Uh, actually, that name is, pr is pretty good. It's pretty good at picking those names. So like, if I am moving from my Windows device, so from Windows 10 to Mac, I feel like there's an effortless transition right now. Yeah. It, if you're a developer who's been using Visual Studio on Windows and you come to the Mac, the editor is now going to feel a lot more familiar. A lot of the little details, things like the way the indentation works and auto brace insertion, things like that now work exactly the same way. All right, I think it's time I bought a Mac again. <laughs> but yes, my favorite feature, however, is the emoji input. Ooh, I'm a big okay. fan of emoji. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so you can bring up the emoji input on macOS with control command period. And so we now have support for this uh, 
So as you can see, my most frequently used emoji. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. And also support for like things like the long, it, mm -hmm. the long press input. So if you want accented char characters, uh, we have much, much better support for uh, bidirectional lang languages and languages with more complex input yeah. methods are now fully supported using the, the, uh, the standard Mac ways of doing that. That's going to make comments look a lot nicer. <laughs> like, more friendly yeah, there almost, some emojis yeah, there. a lot nicer. Wow. Is there anything else that is, um, so a couple of things that were new is like, will we have the same start window experience? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that get to code where you can um, open, uh, when you open Visual Studio, you get that window where you yeah. can do like new project or open a project or just see your recent p p projects. It opens really fast. It makes it really quick to to uh, to open your solution and start writing code because we know that's that that's the important thing. That's an important thing. So, Jordan and Chris, anything to add to the new experience? A big theme that we keep working on in the IDE in general is around. We hear a good bit of feedback about like the performance and reliability of it. So we've done a lot of work. Our uh, 2019 release that came out in April, for example, j well, with every release, lots of stuff going in perf and reliability, but we. Uh, did a ton of fixes like on our Git backend to smooth out you know, some, some issues we had with Git integration. Yeah. The editor, that was, this was like a really big example of that kind of work that one piece is perf and reliability improvements there. We went from where we were uh, with the editor, basically like a game custom drawing out the text on screen rather than using the Mac OS primitives and the actual native text handling. So swapping out things like that in the ID, those are examples of this theme we're working toward of addressing and hardening the IDE, making sure the core experiences of source control, edit, debug, publishing, testing are all real solid. It's kind of the, the space we're in right now working on things. Christo? Um, what, I, I, what I really admire about the team is the fact that we are also uh, very well aligned with the community. So our, the way that we work is 100% uh, driven by the community. And uh, we put a lot of focus on actually listening to our users understanding what they really need, and interacting with them at all levels to um, take their feedback and actually prioritize our workloads based on that. So um, we added support for inside the ID feedback so people can actually go and raise uh, suggestions or uh, raise bugs. And the team is uh, actively looking at that all the time. So uh, one of the things that we want to say is that if anyone is using and we urge our developers to go and download the preview bits and start using them, so we can actually see um, that feedback coming in and. Uh, Hopefully, we can be the product that everyone is super happy about. And, and where would people go to like, give information? Where do they? Oh, is Michaela bringing that up? Yep. Oh, OK. So let's help yeah. report a problem or help provide us a suggestion. And you can just log in and report a bug and attach your logs. So that helps us to track down the issues. Um, so yeah, we, we really appreciate all the folks who've given us feedback on the changes they, wa they want to see, the issues they're running into, so we can make a better product. Um, feedback is really, really important and really appreciated. Yeah, because um, one of the big things that came out is ASP.NET Core and how ASP.NET Core developers can feel nice and friendly and at home yep. on Visual Studio for Mac and Unity. Unity was another big one. Yes. How are we gathering this cluster for information? Like One of the things that we do on my org is we go and kind of look at people behind a glass mirror, and they don't know that we're there. So is it the same kind of experience where that's how you're driving the customer experience? Uh, yeah, we definitely do some of that UX re research with the whole like script and mirrored glass mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, we also go out and talk, and talk to folks and ask them what are the, what are the pain points they're seeing, what, what things do they wish were, e were easier to do. We have developer community where folks can report uh, issues and, and make suggestions. And we also in interact on Twitter and basically across all the channels. Uh, yeah. yeah, we try and listen to people anywhere where they're providing feedback. We want to get that. All right. And, and I'm glad you brought up Twitter because I just as a reminder, you can ask us questions on the Twitters. We will have all the information below that will allow you to ask these questions. So please send us as many questions as you would like um, before we lose these wonderful people. So bring them on. Um, 
Another thing that I saw, I was reading through your um, announcement, is I can run two instances of Visual Studio at the same time now, right? You can, yes. And, uh, and, and was this part of the performance work? Oh, I think I should let you demo that first. Uh, I can demo that, yes. Um, so that, this was one of our most requested features. So you can just right click on it there and do um, new instance. And it'll open up another, another instance. So here you can see the new uh, welcome screen um, that we mentioned uh, earlier, too. So uh, having two instances makes it e easy if you're working with multiple solutions and you want to compare them and things like that. It, it was one of our most top requested features, and that's why we added it. All right. And like, what else can developers look forward to? What, like the mobile space, what have we added with the emulators? What can we see there? The big one with the 2019 release was improvements around the, the like with Xamarin and Android development. So there was up to a, like a 30% uh, improvement in the build times, or up to a 30% improvement on the build times on like the Smart Hotel 360 project, if yeah. some people have seen that one. Yeah, I've seen that one. Um, like 2x improvement uh, on some uh, deployment times for some of these apps as well. So there was a big focus on Android specifically, a lot of feedback that had come in about that work to flow, or workflow, especially around build time. So there was a lot of work that went into that. So that was not the uh, 2019 release. It's actually, that was what we put out in April, so it's available now. It's available now. Um, anything to add to that? Um, like in the Unity space, is there anything that we've been doing that customers should go try right now? Uh, well, we have really deep integration with the uh, Unity workloads. Uh, as always, we have a dedicated team that is working on that integration. And our goal is to make the experience between the Unity editor and the C Sharp editing yep. inside VS and VS for Mac as, as smooth, as quick as possible. So uh, as part of the preview that was released on Monday, we did some improvements there in the tooling as well. So again, that team is listening actively to feedback. And we want everyone to drive that uh, quality based on their uh, voice, right? You make yeah. your voice through that. So Unity, again, um, it's, it's big. It's the default editor, both on Windows and Mac. Yeah. And uh, we want developers, again, to feel at home when they use C Sharp. Yeah, and there was a that reminded me uh, back to like the per for reliability yeah. or the, you know, the customer feedback. The, we had a lot of feedback around the Unity debugger having some differences on the Mac versus the great stuff on Windows. So again, in that April release, the Unity debugger is now at its core, the same as the one on the Windows side. The team did a big bit of work on that. So the debugging experience for our Unity developers should be uh, vastly improved with that release. So that, that was one I almost forgot about there. So yes. as you're mentioning that, like, we've been listening there, yeah. There you go. All right. And this is where I throw like the curveball question. Uh oh. No, it's nice. Don't worry. It's, it's a great question. What is the future? What does the future look like for VS for Mac? What can customers look forward to seeing at the end of the year, at the beginning of the new year in 2020? Or even like wild ideas that you've been thinking about. This is a safe, nice space. <laughs> well, we've got, so we're looking like we did the work with the editor and we're focusing very much on the fundamental workflow. Again, I mentioned source control, editing, debugging, and testing. Debugging is in our sites. Yep. We're going to keep going with the editor. We've got to continue the work we started. We're not done once we put out the new editor. Now it's looking at things like, well, where do we go next of adding in code lens or peak definition? Great features that have been on Windows and um, in the VS family that we want on the ID. We've got this basic work needed for this first piece of the editor. Continue building that out. Debugging, we're looking at making sure it's solid and uh, addressing some top feedback there. And uh, NuGet is another top item for improving. Uh, we get a lot of feedback around solution level package management. That, um, and then multi-targeting comes up a good bit too. So we're starting to dive into that a bit more to be able to better handle Customers coming in, there's a number of places in the Xamarin workflows. The multi-targeting yeah. is increasingly important. So those are like the top ones in my head right now for the spaces of work we're looking at. Oh, and the uh, XAML language service. I don't know if you want to talk any on that one. Um, yeah, so that kind, of, that kind of goes back to the editor. So it is currently in, pr in preview, and the new editor only works for C Sharp files right now. So we need to bring all of the other language services to the new editor as well, and share uh, and bring the language services for those for those file types over from Windows as well. So we get a consistent experience for things like XAML um, and Razor and JSON and so on. Um, so there is a lot more work to do on the editor just to kind of like build it out across all the file types. Yeah. 
So even like as a VB developer in the future, because like we we had a conversation with the VB developer, like as a VB developer in the future, I will be happy on VS for Mac. Maybe? I'm not going to commit to anything, <laughs> but, so, but the work that we've been doing would definitely make it easier um, to, to bring that. Um, All right. I, if, I, if we could, yeah, so, so if, folks are, if folks want VB support, um, please go vote on developer com com community. Like the more votes we get there, um, like our priorities are guided by what we hear from, yes. from people. So, and if we do one thing, it means we're not going to do something else. So... I completely is, understand. So yeah. talk to them on, on, on the Twitters, and we will move from there. Um, so we are at the end. Thank you so much for coming. We will be right back with how to mine your data for gold. Stay with us, and thank you for coming. <laughs>